motion there. And I think he might be hiding from Brown. So Green just can take the opportunity to sneak in. Watching these two, they do play quickly, don't they? They they know their next move the minute they head towards their ball, and they yes, do actually they, think they quickly, plan. don't they? Mm. Mm. They've made a plan and they're sticking to it. He's going for the hoop again. This time, Finally. straight through. <laughs> Stop the clock. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so Gary goes to 4-2. Mm -hmm. And uh, David first to hoop 7. Defensive position from Green. He could still run the hoop, but he can't be hit far away. Well, Brown's gone, but I'm not sure if yes, White got in mm. the jaws. That's great. Really good shot. I wonder if he planned that That's or whether answer. that was just serendipity. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would have had it in his mind. Oh. And there's a jump and it cleared the ball. That was, oh, that was good. I thought for a minute that it had gone through. Now we have pink in the jaws. Mm. And that is a strong position. Yes. Green can clear it, but, um, but white can clear green first. And um, that yes. allows David to be able to go straight down to hoop eight. So this is an important it's a pressure shot. shot. Mm. Oh. And just missed. Just missed. Mm. This he really needs to hit green far away so that he can't hit pick from that side of the court hoop. Yes, so mm. it's gone a very odd way. Be a decent shot to knock it out of the hoop from here. Does it? Great shot. Yes. That Great shot. Excellent. Just sap so, your spirit when the opponent does that to you. <laughs> yes, it's not over till it's over. Mm. I am surprised that he um, took position there. I thought with no balls in within Cooey that he would have just gone for the hoop. Well, if Green stays there, there's potential from this angle of an in-off. Is that what he's thinking? Or Green is going to clear pink, but we'll see if Green stays there. I don't think so. Oh. Ooh. And that was an uncharacteristic miss. Mm. This is turning into a battle like the battle for hoop six. Well, I did start the clock on this one. 
We'll just How long are we up to now? We're up to four minutes so far on one hoop. It speaks to their level of expertise though, doesn't it? Yes, each each shot has an answer. Mm. Mm. And the answer is often an extremely good defence. Um, I didn't think across there. You know, he's clearly, clearly thinking that I'll put pink over there and I'll, I'll take out whatever lands in front of the hoop with white. But that didn't work this time. This would probably be a block. Um, no, he's decided to get the extra yard. <coughs> I think he was putting pressure on saying you've now got an extra yard distance mm -hmm. for the clearance and you missed the last one so I'm going to make you do it again. Nice clean shot down to hoop eight. Oh, mm. okay. Not quite. Pressure on his face says it all. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Took a little bit of the leg to make it go off crooked mm. but still he's down there. It's, it's a good position, even though it's not in front of the hoop. It's certainly, what was Peter's word? A controller. A yeah, control wall. Mm. It's Peter would say that the brown was the control wall. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's a little bit further away than Peter's ball, but, but it's still <laughs> able to clear. This is a drifter. We are on court two. They do drift tremendously in this corner. Nice clearance. Yes, these, these fellows will have played here quite a lot before, but um, the Victorians will know that court two has many roles. And particularly on that side. That was a very good shot. Is Gary opting to shift pink? I've forgotten where the um, where the brown ball is, Serena. Is it in position to clear the northern light? boundary? Northern boundary. Oh no. no. Long way. Oh no. Mm. There we go. We can see him in the distance. Mm. Long position. I wonder will White bother to to shift him? No, it's going in close. Oh, mm, a little bit far. Yeah. Get the door open for Green. A little bit offline. So Green stayed back to um, avoid an easy clearance, but um, David's going to get rid of it. Mm.
Oh, well, that was uncharacteristic. That one had a target of white and a hoop and missed both of them. So here's David with a chance to make it three far. Yeah. And he does. Which he does. So that was a 10 minute hoop. Well, if there was uh, 12 hoops, you're looking at an hour and 120 minutes, aren't you? 10 to 8, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think they've allowed 120 minutes for a game. <laughs> David must have thought that that green is definitely a runner because he's taken the shot at it from way over. So this is a critical shot for white now. Ooh. Just notice it enough it so line. it can't run. Mm. Mm. Brown's, Brown's still a threat, but Green has another opportunity to come in and block or come in and put a second runner. But both of those are now runners. The pink and white have got to do something pretty good here. It's a miss with pink. Mm -hmm. So Brown's right in front, but a little bit out. Oh, oh that was very badly miscued. Took the right hand leg. They've been doing some wonderful clearances, but they haven't had much luck with their hoops. This is an important clearance too. Mm. Yes, good shot. That's seven yards. That's sort of bread and butter for these fellas, isn't it? Well, we are seeing elite players and, and a wonderful array during this event when croquet can be played as a more social activity though, can't it? We have had, it um, is pretty social. Mm. So we've just had um, Seniors Festival at my club and we've just had the most wonderful response from members of the community. But what we're seeing now, I mean, is just uh, wonderful ball control, quick thinking strategy and tactics, and just these pesky hoops. <laughs> yes, we've often said the game would be easy if it wasn't for the hoops. So whites would have to do something smart here. That green one is really threatening. Oh, unfortunately cleared his own ball. You've had some practice shots, Gary. You can do this. And that's why there Ooh. is a mascot named after you. <laughs> that's funny, isn't it? That one didn't even touch the sides. And yet mm. other times they've been hitting the leg. Mm. Just got it right that time. So it's now 6-3. And that would be a control ball in the language of some coaches. So this next hoop could determine the match. The brown, the Gary went up to have a look at it to see where he should place the brown. So he's, I think he might have been going for wired from pink.
we do get this wonderful overview of the court from the balcony at the Victorian Croquet Centre. Not a lot of other venues have this opportunity so that we can sort of look down upon the player as well as actually get an eye high level view from a roving camera. It's really quite an ideal venue for live streaming. Yes, it, it is. Uh, I did notice watching some um, live streaming of the AC Worlds in the Women's Worlds in New Zealand and that all of the cameras were at ground level and sometimes when they switched cameras it was really confusing because you couldn't see the whole court and I, I was struggling to work out which hoop they were going for at times. But this way I think it's really good because you can get the whole view and the zoom. The cameraman did a great job. Mm. And the replays have been almost instantaneous. It's just been wonderful. I, th I think the My Sport Live team have got onto this really well now. They've been doing it for us for a while, or two years, as you say. Mm. All right, so this is an important one. He needs to clear it. Yes. And he does. Can't afford to lose this hoop because he lose this hoop. He lose the match, David. So come on. Gary's relentless, isn't he? He just keeps putting that mm. ball back. So we're looking at about 10 yards. And this time we've missed it. So this could be the setting hoop. If Brown can get this one, even if he gets in the jaws, it would be enough. No? Mm. Little slump of the shoulders, he's not happy with that one. But both his balls are still there, and pink and white are not. Alright, so green is the threat. I think David's going to have to clear it and we'll block it, but of course it's close enough to mm. jump. Gary over on the sidelines having a little bit of a practice swing. Clear and again, both. both. <laughs> <laughs> you don't tell me you that he tried for that. must ask him how he does that. <laughs> David deciding just where he's going to put this close in and offer it up as a, a target or hang out a bit. And a little shrug of the sleeves there because uh, Gary's looking at that hoop. Oh, he would have liked Ooh, to have stayed there. Yes, the, I was about to say, the brown's moved away, hasn't it? Mm. Ooh, and that was important as well. This is only the second day of this competition. Mm. There's been... Oh. Yes, the replay of that. Um, on the second day, they could be a little tired. On the third day, even more tired. So they've really got to keep their concentration for this. All right. Pink, beautifully placed. And brown. Popping in as well. Where is the green? He must be very confident he can yeah. take that pink. I think so. Makes me think green's on that side, but no. Mm. Oh, just like the hoop. 
That's a hoop. Amazing. That needs a reply. <laughs> So that's game and So do they take a break before game three or do they swing straight into it? I think they swing straight into it. Normally the tournament conditions say that um, games are seamless, but we'll find out. Mm. Now, all this time I've been thinking that that was critical because um, Gary was going to um, have to win. Of course, yes, he did. He was 6-7 in the first, so 7-3 in the second is pretty good. Looks like there's some games have started in the back. Yes, there's games on all the courts at the moment because we've got the four eights and then we've got two women's eights and then another men's eights. So I think there'll be action everywhere. that much information being fed into croquet scores it's almost like a full-time occupation <laughs> clicking between the blocks checking what's going on yes the manager has quite a job here mm. managing who goes on and keeping the scores putting them on croquet scores of course everybody who's here is working as uh, volunteers even the people who look after the courts they're all volunteers which is wonderful see two of those who or three of them who work on the courts are here that's um owen dickinson who's playing um, lester hughes and kevin mm -hmm. who you just saw kevin beer he um, he works on the courts i think kevin often does the lines so we never say oh dear the lines are fading because kevin's working on it I see Chaz Quinn is playing as well, and Chaz Quinn also um, often sets courts, doesn't he? Sets the hoops and things. So we're actually yes. looking at um, yes, Rosemary Landry and and who else? Uh, Julie Beasley from Warrigal is playing Rosie. Oh, Rosie from Camaray. Hmm. Hmm. There's Julie in the red shirt. We've probably got Warrigal on her back. Julie has noticed in many other sports. In many other sports, all the players actually do have their surname on the back of their shirt. Wouldn't that be wonderful for us at Croquet here? It, it would be. And um, the English, when they come, they've always got their names on, on their backs. Um, and the Americans, I think. But it's not something that the Australians often do. Mm. But yes, to have the club on and, and of course the Warrigal Club are very proud of Julie because um, it's that much harder for the rural, regional players to come to, to Melbourne for training and for play. And um, when I first met Julie, she was, um, she came, she bit the bullet and came to Kenley to play and um, she did show a great deal of promise and she has now been in the Victorian state team, so she's done wonderfully well. And Rosie's been playing AC for years and uh, also a uh, very good GC player. Julie mentioned, uh, we should mention that Julie won with her brother, was it the Victorian golf croquet doubles very recently? Yes. Yes, she did. So she's getting yeah. experience all the time. So the score now is 6-2 um, to Rosie. And Rosie took game one. So we're getting close to uh, match. So these 
next this next tube is quite critical for Julie. Now she can land a good ball with this one. Then um, she can leave black to take yellow, just a little bit long. Oh, oh, what a beautiful blocking shot. Yes. I mean, she, she has to knock it out. She could possibly jump red to knock yellow or even jump red for the hoop but um, yellow's going through that hoop and she has to deal with it. She could possibly even hit red onto yellow. Looks like that's the option she's taking. Be very sure of your bombard line there don't you? Black through Pit, uh, red and then on to yellow. No, she decided to go for the hoop instead. Mm. Yes, it's um, when you when you block, it's sometimes better to block just half the ball because it makes it so much more difficult for the opponent to um, to clear both or to hit one onto the other. But yes, she made a good attempt at the hoop. Ah, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> Not more expression from the ladies than the men in the last game. <laughs> I did see some shoulder shrugs from Gary. Yes, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think Julie taking on the hoop was very brave, and as as she ended up still nearby, it turned out quite well for her when Rosie missed. Yellow can run, she has to clear it, but it could only really go to the boundary. She'd like to keep black in the running position when she hits this, and she does. I think that's still in front and probably blocking black. Till we going to check it. Yes, for that camera angle you can see it. This is a brilliant camera angle as well. We can see everything Julie's trying to do. but unfortunately yep. blue is far away. They always aim to um, clear and remain closer to the hoop than the cleared ball. And to do that you've really got to hit dead centre. I hope the viewers at home are enjoying this as much as we are. I do know I have acquaintances that have said, oh no, I've done all my gardening. I'm looking forward to just Saturday watching the croquet. Oh, that's nice to hear. Hmm. Well, as you know, the link is distributed to our members via our Facebook page. 
via the Croquet Victoria Facebook page. And the comments are always so positive. And the point is that whenever a major event comes up now, people expect it to be live streamed. Oh, do they? Well, we have it's, quite no, a few it's, it's guests wonderful that they do. Too. I've accepted yes. it. Mm. Yes. Yes. Um, commentators coming in from um, Queensland later today, mm. and also uh, some of the players when they are not on court intend to um, to do some commentary as well so you get a different different viewpoint from the, some of these players so julie's really has to ship this ball or it's match it's quite a difficult shot from there and she did shift it and yellow doesn't get another turn for a little while, so it might be enough unless red can get through the hoop. No, no. Julie still has a chance here if she can clear that yellow with the black ball. Yes. And that's it. Well done. Seven two, two to Rosie. Two best Which of three. Which is a She's won it in two. A very appropriate time for me to say I've thoroughly enjoyed your company, Tricia, but we have a new commentator coming on. Wade. Oh, thanks, Serena. From Queensland, and I know you'll enjoy his company. So, um, I'll be back again tomorrow and I will be watching all day today. Thank you both. All right, thank you, Serena. Hello, Wade. It's Trish here. I'm not hearing Wade just at the moment, so um, we've gone back to the David Hanbridge Gary Phipps game. And uh, it's currently one love to Gary. Wade's just trying to get his um, connection sorted and then we'll be here. Is that a little bit better? Ah, hello Wade. Yes, that's, that's better. We can hear you now. Um, thank you for joining us. And we've just been watching um, one of the women's eights games and uh, Rosie Landry has won her match um, two games to love against Julie Beasley and we've gone back to one of the men's games that we were watching earlier and Gary Phipps and David Hanbridge are one game all and the um, score now is one love to Gary and it looks like with the position of the green ball that is actually going up to be two love in the minute now. There we go, two love. Yes, after going to all that effort, taking his hat off and getting all lined up for the jump shot, it was a bit of a letdown. But anyway, he's <laughs> onto the next hoop now, good position in front of this one and all will be forgotten and he's done that. That was a really good position. So. Pink's nicely done. Brown's a long way away, but um, he'll probably go across and hang back a little so that he's not a target for Pink. Yeah, don't want to follow up one bad shot with another one. So he quickly mm -hmm. brushed off that jump shot that wasn't and now is going to stymie the green. Mm. It's not a very nice thing to do. <laughs> if your ball's right in front of the hoop, I think it's a perfectly nice thing to do. Yeah. 
So he's used he that to get to a head, head start. Yeah, head down to the next two. All right. David, let's see if that tactic is going to work for you. No. They have had trouble with their hoops, even um, little close ones like that. And so all the balls are everywhere except where they'd like to be. Mm. Yes, it's the trouble when you're clearing a close ball, ball close to the hoop, it always ends up spread everywhere, doesn't it? David's mallet is a, has an exceptionally long handle. Yes, I think he um, he plays Solomon style right up at the top of the mallet. I think doesn't he? Stands very upright. Yeah, two two uh, handles of note on these two gentlemen. We've got the long and the twisty of it. <laughs> yes. So Gary's from Western Australia. Where's David from? David's from New South. I think he plays for Newcastle. I'm not sure about that. Both these men have won some of the Australian majors recently, and um, this is the first eight, so they're in with the, the top top eight players that were available for this event. So David's having a little squiz. He obviously mm. thinks he can put this yellow through the hoop, so we'll see if he can. No, nope. better luck next time. That has happened a lot. This looks like he's like winding up here. for a jump. He does. Yes. Well, it's a bit These blokes need to, like, yeah, like, maybe I'll put the mockers on them, but. <laughs> Let's see some first eight quality play here. Come on, boys. <laughs> He's going to go the jump straight now. Yeah. So it didn't work the first time. So let's see if the repeat has a better outcome. It does. Yes. That's, how it's, that's how it's done. He just needed a practice. And it's left white in an ugly position too. Yeah. And green, green goes off to the penalty spot too. Is it's definitely worth again. a replay that one. A yeah. couple of little hops. Very good. That one. Yep. Yeah, that wasn't a particularly high hop. It looked like a little bunny rabbit jumping through a field, but it got over the white ball that was in the jaws. Yeah, I think White was just to the side from, from that replay and the, the hop was just at the right time. So there's the and green the coming in from the penalty spot. Yeah, I think he would have liked to have been on the short side there so that when the ball comes down, he could clear it to the long boundary. But it is what it is. He's not going to be complaining too much at 2-0 up. No. So far, these couple of hoops we've seen have been, been quite haphazard, not to, not to a traditional style of, of uh, round. And that was a long miss, a wide miss. Yes, it's not going to plan at the moment, is it? No, need to shake it off. Maybe I've just spoiled early this morning watching the um, under-21s in New Zealand. There was some good croquet happening there. Yes, 
uh, New Zealand has a lot of extremely good young players that have entered that event. And, and there's, is it four Australians over there? Yeah, I think there, there could even be more than that now, but the young Egyptian fellow was the one that most impressed me because the Egyptians over the past couple of world championships had somewhat um, struggled with the more touch players, the, the AC style of golf play. And this young Egyptian fellow was, had taken on a lot of um, that style of play into his play where he was playing a lot more touches and blocks and and being a lot more considerate about his play than the usual crash and bang Egyptian style. So it was interesting to see that development in the young Egyptian player. Oh, that's a good clearance. It was good. Um, I think for the Egyptians, for the young ones in particular, it's better that they do that too, because a lot of them were coming down with wrist injuries because they use that enormous wrist flick and they can't do it forever. Quite taking position. We'll see how Green responds. Nice clearance. So green, Very good. Now, although Green has disappeared into the distance there, so if he plays this correctly, Dave can get back into these hoops. Like get him back into this game because he doesn't want to lose too many more hoops this early. No, he certainly doesn't. Two loves not very comfortable. Mm, and that was a shot that wasn't a position, wasn't a hoop running shot. He would have liked to have had that dis that uh, decision again. I can relate. Lots of my life decisions have been like that. Well, Gary's going to bite the bullet here and go for that hoop. And once again, just not quite. Yeah, we had a free shot, so there was nothing... Nothing to Nothing lose, to was him. there? No. No. Now, Wade, I'm about Whoa, to take bendy. a break, and I'm going to, I'm going to um, hand over to Kate, who will be with you for the rest of this game. Fantastic. Good morning, Kate. So Green's come into a position that he must just have decided to go halfway I don't know this is all very strange play at the moment good morning Wade nice to connect morning, with you Kate. again Maybe, yes it's great to, to talk to you again I'm not sure what any of these players are doing quite at the moment they're meant to be making hoop three no hoop four but yeah Hopefully in the next couple of shots, we end up with some balls in front of the hoop again. I think it's still hoop three. No, we're on to, we're on to hoop four. It, it's um, three um, to, to Gary. It's no, I think only two. Well, I mean, I don't know, but they're on the balls are all down near hoop. Three. Yeah, they're playing hoop four. I don't think the score has been quite updated yet. Okay, they're just playing. Let me just obstruct my my opponent or something. Yeah, once you figure out what they're doing, just you can tell as me. If they're going for hoop three. It just does look as if they're still going for hoop three. No, they're definitely going for hoop four, but there's just a, a little bit of strange occurrences happening. It seems like they're getting back no. to the remembering that they want to be in front of the hoop to run it. Mm. Oh, I see. Okay. Gotcha. There seems to be quite a little bit of a roll off on that hoop. Everybody's disappearing off towards the boundary there. Yes, I think this is the famous court too. It has a real roll down towards the boundary. So that was white. Come on. So green to play. Come on, boys. Green can't even see pink. 
There's a very good shot of how Green couldn't quite see pink past brown. So now Green is going to go and block pink from the hoop. Almost, but not perhaps quite. Yeah. We had an absolutely brilliant jump from the boundary for hoop three. But apart from so that... So who got the, hoop three? Because that's not showing. Uh, Gary. But apart from Gary. that... So Gary we've is seen three nil some, up. Yeah, we've seen some decidedly... Um, I'm trying to think of a nice word to say terrible play, but um, I'm sure they'll Doesn't come good in a second. Well, they've been struggling I'm afraid with that's all it's been. Oh, no, they've been struggling with, with swinging the mallet at the moment. But they'll get better. The quality of these players, they can't they keep playing. playing that badly. Here we go. We're getting back into it now. They were playing beautifully before. Yeah. There we go. That's a nice clearance. Especially if you can make the next hoop. Mm -hmm. Well, not right now. No. Another... I'll go through another rotation and we'll see where where they end up. White looks like it mightn't even be able to make it back to the hoop there. It's quite wired. Gary's taking control of this hoop again, two in front. Well, well, that, that was, was hit straight, but it didn't yeah, it didn't stay straight. Now we have another attempt at the hoop. Yes. And that one's gone through. And this time he's got it. So Gary in a really strong position here. 4 0 up after four hoops. David will really want to be looking to get both of these middle hoops and then have a real good crack at hoop seven, the short hoop across as well. So if he's going to make a comeback, it's these three next hoops. If he doesn't make the next three, he'll find himself in a real pickle. Come on, Dave, park it right in front. Uh. Good defensive position. Yeah, or a poor, poor approach shot, one of the two. Let's, be, let's look on the bright side. Yeah, but in the first eights, you really need to be taking position in front of the hoops. And it's the shortest approach shot of the game, so... Reg Bamford has, uh, has given... Uh, Reg, his, Reg Bamford's advice is that whatever you do, you declare that's what you meant to do, or otherwise you just brush your hand across your forehead and wipe it away. Oh, yes, so and he did that because very he's nice... going to put his pink... Oh, ball's going everywhere. But we're focusing on the second colours. So for those who are watching, there are two games on this court. That was not what he wanted to do. 
There are two games on this court, one involving green and brown partners, pink and white partners, and the other one, which is the one we're not watching, involves blue and black and red and yellow. So we're not watching that game. We will come to that game if this one is over um, fairly soon because this is the end of the match. And I think the new game that started is the first of a game in the next round. They're pushing us along here because they've got so many games to get through and such crowded courts. Isn't that beautiful? Especially if it's now, created Barry, a little gap. Especially if it's created a little gap. I wonder it if we can like see if there's a little gap. It, it mm, must have been because no. he didn't even attempt to play a, a croquet shot there. He So lovely nestling up shot there, which has given him the perfect opportunity Beautiful. to put it in the jaws. But at least there's no balls well, there to either clear or that. jump. No. No, it's very difficult, isn't it? Brown is a very long way away. Yeah, in some yeah, ways yeah. that's we beneficial going because through. yeah, in oh, some ways that's beneficial like because because the next shot he takes he can run that hoop and get good placement up at hoop number six. But I'm sure Gary will have a ping at this. You would think so. So will white send pink through? Yes. It's looking do. like that's what he... And that is... Oh, no. Changing he's changed his mind. his mind. Well, 4-2 down, he needs to play a little bit smart and try and get that pink in running the hoop all the way up to hoop six because he needs to make these two middle hoops to get it back to 4-2. Yeah, 4-0 down. If yeah. he makes... Yeah, because if he makes the turn at... at um, even at 5-1, he's, he's in big trouble. But if you can get it back to 4-2 and then there's the short hoop across to, to one back, he can get himself right back in the game quickly in these middle hoops. And that was pin jumped. perfect. I think that's, yeah, just on the side. Took a bit of a bobble off mm. that old center peg hole there, but that's all right. Down near the next hoop, so he's got control of it even before the, the next ball's played down there. So, 4 1 1 to David Tanvich. Stop, stop, stop. Oh. He's caused himself a mischief. He has. I don't think they're touching. Touching, of don't course, makes a Reg really big difference. Yeah, I don't even think Reg Bamford would say he meant to do that. Maybe he'd just wipe it off his forehead. Yep. Now that's one bit of Reg's advice that I've taken on and I end up coming off the court with a red forehead from all the wipes I have to do. <laughs> uh, so after a promising start, it's gone a bit pear-shaped. So if Gary can push white away here gives green then the, a good opportunity to make the 5-1 hoop so it's going to have to be a good roque from back there to disrupt green unless the hoop just proves too challenging again yeah that that might be his best hope but he'll give it a swing 
these are the ones that you give it a swing and then it goes tearing through the hoop and you're like yeah i'm a croquet genius I meant to do that. yeah this one isn't going to go tearing through the hoop though no it's gone behind the hoop in a very good place should green stick just waiting for the other game to bash their ball across the court well very well placed yes yes well he turned around disappointed like a child that dropped their ice cream at the fair That is fatal, though. This has come again another day. Oh, it day. is. The... Yeah. Is it a poly test from white? Or not from white, but on the generously allowing it. I don't think White picked the ball up, but it needed picking up or it would have been hit by the other game. And that was a very good jump that we saw in the corner of our eye there. Over yeah, which Fletcher boy is that? Is that Malcolm? I can't tell from the amount that I can see of them. So Gary in a strong position here with his two balls in front of the hoop. It's soon going to be one. He was hoping to take green out at the same time, I think, looking at that angle. So Gary just keeping up the pressure, putting the ball back in. Dave having to keep clearing every single stroke. These are some good hoop position plays from Gary. He's, he's got his touch back. Oh, good one. So if White can get rid of green here, he's got an excellent chance of making it 4-2 and clawing himself further back into this game. Has it gone far enough? I'm going to venture no. Waiting, waiting. That pink oh, that could nice. very well be, yes, and pink could very well be wired from brown by white. Yeah, if we had a bit more of an angle showing us white. Time will tell. No, it wasn't. Ooh. No, it wasn't. It was a very close run thing, though. It was. So now we have Brown, I think, in a running position. Yes. Yep, to make it 5-1 and put himself in a very powerful position in this game. 
and he's done it this time, so well done, Gary. After losing the first game, you've done very well. That green could be wired from the, the white there. Gary's going on over to have a look. Because if that's the case, he's going to have to shoot at it. But yeah, it must have been wired. And hopefully he hasn't blocked himself with his ball on that ball either. Must have, must have had a good line of that ball because that went between the two of them, went to the left of green but the right of white. Anyway, white will try and run this and he'll really want to run it well to get down to hoop eight because if he's going to make a glorious comeback, it needs to begin here. And it's not. He's as disappointed as I am. I was really cheering for you then, Dave. Gary, 6-1 up and travelling nicely down to hoop eight. And so he's got to Very be looking nice forward thing. to lunch here. And probably thinking, what sandwich am I going to have? Because, I mean, Dave looks like he's thinking the same thing with that shot. That was a bit of a, a res resignation shot. A lovely angled hoop here. Yeah, a little bit of an in off. Just yeah. catching the white like that. Yeah, straightening up his shot for him, actually. So we're now on 6 1. Yeah, if, if Gary wins this hoop, he takes the game. And the match. Oh, that yeah. was brave. That's what yeah, we call I think, brave I think in the, trade. Yeah, I think the resignation had come in, judging by his, his couple of last shots. So we'll see if Gary can finish it off. And he can, he and he can go off and order his he can go off and order his sandwiches for lunch. Well done, Gary. I think he might have already ordered them. I think that we have a catering thing going on here. Catering is being provided to raise money for a wonderful. Uh, club down on the Mornington Peninsula, R and B, which is a mobile club. They carry hoops, balls, everything in the boot of a couple of carts, and they play with anybody who is interested in playing with them in the parks and gardens. It's an oh, outreach. what a wonderful so idea! All sorts of people, yeah, fantastic, and so it's really innovative. They, I don't know of any other club that does this. Uh, they have got a base and they're negotiating to have a slightly more permanent base because over the last few years, I think they've been going for five years, they have accrued quite a few people who've joined and who now want to play competitively. So they're really building both part-time and full-time, a part-time and casual interest. Very good. Oh, that, so they're raising money yeah, because they a... don't charge anybody anything. Ah, oh, that's a really cool idea. I remember hearing about a similar club in New York who it, it's a very casual social club and they would get dressed up in in um, period and, and eccentric costumes and turn up at different parks and have have soirees and play semi-serious croquet so it's great to hear a That's sort of a, a similar thing thing in think. Australia no, yeah, this a, is not the same a, as that. Um, this is not this is not um, as a, kind of a, as eccentric or dressy up as that. That's not dressy up. It's it's for people who are a bit on the margins and don't join in anything, and encouraging them to join in this. So now this looks like Robert Fletcher, I do believe. Robert Fletcher is playing Steve Harden. 
So this is Robert here lining up blue. He must be playing blue and black. He's lining up blue to clear yellow. And he has I done it. Robert notice Robert's Robert playing Fletcher. with a, um, a Peter Coles mallet. I haven't seen him use a Peter Coles mallet before. He's been changing his mallets around lately. I saw Last time I saw him, he was playing with a Fletcher mallet. The time before, he was playing with one of the, with a very old Dawson, which he'd had for many years. Uh, so maybe he's decided different mallets for different different um, sports, different versions of the sport. Now we don't yet know what the score is in this game. We do know who's playing and we'll bring up the scores in a minute when we find out what they are. What's Robert going to do here? I would imagine he's going to clear red. Red's blocked by, oh, yes, he will, because otherwise red will clear black. Yeah. And he did. And he bumped yellow into a very unpleasant position right on the leg. And, and not just that, <laughs> I think red is also wired from black, so... Could be, might not be, but it's a very this long way bit... away. Yeah, I don't this is how you become one of the is. best players in the world. Yeah. Yeah, we're very lucky to have the Fletchers here. I'd be very surprised if he can see that black. If he did, he didn't hit it. Yep, so the results so are the same. Now, 